Hello and welcome to my video tutorial on the excess burden of a labor income tax in partial equilibrium. In this tutorial we compute the extra costs of a labor income tax. So if a household has to pay labor income taxes, of course it generates tax revenue, which can be used for some way for improving expenditures by the government. But the welfare loss, the utility loss to a household, to a wage earner, to a worker, is much larger than the, uh, than the tax revenue, and which is basically explained by the substitution effect. As the net wage goes down, he works less and can afford less consumption. And we will measure the substitution effect, and the total welfare loss minus the tax revenue is called the excess burden or the dead weight loss of a labor income tax. And this excess burden, well, it's going to be dramatic for the United States. So we compute that it's approximately $1,800 for the average wage earner in the US. Now, if you think this is a lot, then uh, you should pity countries like Germany or Belgium, where this excess burden, the dead weight loss from a labor income tax is about twice as high than in the United States. So this particular application here is taken from my book, Public Economics, section 5.31, and I will use the slides of, of my uh, from my book that are available publicly from my homepage. So you can download it from my homepage as you like. So let's get into the slides in next. So on chapter 5, income taxation, let's go to slide number 15 to get a first impression of on our our behavior of our tax rate. Here you find the US income tax rate in the period 1948-2008. And as you can see the upper curve, the red line, that's the capital income tax rate, it has been falling ever since 2000, uh, 1950 by about 20, 25 percentage points from from 55 to 30 percentage. The green line, the broken line, that's the labor income tax rate, and it has been increasing over this period from 1950, starting at about 10 to 12 percent in 1950, to approximately 30 percent in recent years. Now we will analyze the effects of the labor income tax rate in the following. So let's go to the next diagram where we present equilibrium in the labor market. So labor supply is an increasing function of labor L, or rather the wage, gross wage, W, and labor demand is a, is a falling function of the gross wage, W. The equilibrium in labor market is presented by the point of intersection, point E, where labor supply is equal to labor demand and labor is equal to L0 and wage rate W0. Now the imposition of uh, labor income tax tau L shifts up the labor supply curve from LS to LS prime if both LD and LS are graphed as function of the gross wage W. So we have to shift up this curve by the proportionality factor 1 over 1 minus tau L. The new labor market equilibrium is presented by point G and at gross wage W1 and corresponding net wage 1 minus tau L times W1. The loss in the consumer rent is presented by the surface of the quadrangle BEDC and the reduction in the producer surplus is presented by the quadrangle a, G, E, B. Now, total welfare loss can be measured by the colored uh, surface. The tax revenue amount to the surface of the rectangular AGDC, which is simply tau L W1 times 
on the labor supply L1. So it's, it's a yellow rectangle. And the difference between the two, that's our excess burden, and it's measured by the orange triangle GED. Now we let's analyze this closer in another diagram, and we simply assume that the labor demand curve is flat, is horizontal, parallel to the labor L, so that the gross wage remains constant at W0. This makes our analysis a little bit simpler. But also the labor supply, of course, is a little bit more elastic than the labor supply, a demand, sorry. So this brings us to the presentation in the picture on slide 25. Uh, here we graph the budget line of the household as a function of labor. So we assume that the household has an exogenous income of I. So even if he doesn't work, so the labor supply is zero, he will receive the labor supply at amount of E. So that's why I just move the cursor here right now. With increasing labor, the in total income increases with the wage rate W0. And we find the utility maximization point at the point where the indifference curve U0 is tangent to our budget line. This is at point A. Notice that our indifference curves are upward sloping because we graphed everything as a function of labor and not of leisure time, as we might be used to. So if labor increases, let's say, by one hour per, per week, we want to get compensated by higher income, which we spend on consumption, so to remain indifferent and at a point on the indifference curve U0. We assume that total income is spent on consumption, so equally we could have put consumption as our argument on the ordinate. Now let's look at the effect of a change of a position of a labor income tax. So therefore, the budget line shifts downward or rotates downward uh, and, of course, we get the same exogenous income, which allows us to afford consumption at the amount of I. And we get the new equilibrium point C, where the indifference curve U1 is tangent to the new budget line. In this illustration, we can distinguish income effects and substitution effects. So for, for given wage rate W0, our budget line would just be parallel to the old one. And so we have the income effect as a movement from point A to point B. Now when we also take into account the change in the net wage to t uh, the reduction by minus tau and W0, we have the substitution effect, which is a movement from point B to point C. Now, in this graph, we find the utility loss. We can identify the utility loss by the vertical difference between point E and D, the vertical difference between these two lines, the budget line and the parallel shift of this budget line which is simply the equivalent variation. So this is the amount that we would pay the government if it does not impose a tau and an income tax rate tau L. We would not pay any more than the equivalent variation because this would reduce our utility. So this is the maximum amount that we would pay the government not to impose a tax. Now, where do we find tax revenues? This is simply the difference, the vertical difference between the old budget line and the new budget line. So everything that we cannot afford, of course, is taken away from the government, which is the distance CE. This is equal to our tax revenue. So if we compare the tax revenue CE to our utility loss DE, we find that there's an excess, an excess burden, a dead weight loss, DWL, which is the distance CD. 
and that's what we want to compute next. Now, as you can see, the distance CD is only stems from the substitution effect. If the substitution effect were zero, we would stay in point B. There would be no excess burn, there would be no welfare loss. We would pay the, the vertical distance to our budget line in, in terms of tax revenue, and this would also be equal to our equivalent variation. But because of the substitution effect, and just because of the substitution effect, there is an excess burn, so we have to compute the excess burn, uh, with the of the substitution effect, and therefore, of course, we have to compute how our Higgsian uncompensated labor supply changes as a consequence of the change in the net wage. So we basically can compute this with the help of an elasticity, which is the elasticity of the compensated labor supply with respect to wages. Um, we can, in our diagram here, we can, if we look at the new equilibrium, point C here, with labor supply L1 equal to the compens compensated labor supply H1 and the utility U1, we can derive what's happening if the wage rate increases to W0, then our labor supply L0, our Marshall labor supply goes up to L0, presented by point A, and our Higgsian labor supply goes up to point B to H0. So you can see the, the Higgsian labor supply is more sensitive to, the, to a change in wages than the labor. The Marshall and labor supply, of course, we do not get higher. Uh, we do have to go. We get in compensation, meaning, of course, that we have, do not have the income fact here, and therefore, labor supply, Higgsian labor supply, is higher. This is illustrated in the following picture where we have graphed equilibrium point C with labor supply equal to Higgsian labor supply, the increase to the wage rate to W0, so the Marshall and labor supply goes up to point A. We now have higher income, this, re this reduces the, the labor supply for the income effect, and the compensated labor supply goes up to H0 to point B, corresponding to B in the former diagram, and we have a higher, a higher Higgsian labor supply, which we denote by lowercase h. Now, in the book we show that the tax revenues are equal to the difference W0, W1, which is equal to tau L times, times W, tax rate times wage rate, times the labor supply L1. That's our new labor supply. And our equivalent variation is equal to the surface of given by W0, B, C, W1. So we can show that the, the, tax, uh, the tax excess burn is simply reflected by the change in, in the range rate times the change in the Higgsian compensated labor supply divided by one half. So which gives us formula three, which is derived in more detail in my book. Now, if we substitute the labor compensated labor supply elasticity, which is defined as the percentage change of the Higgsian labor supply in response to a 1% change in the wage rate, we derive the expression in equation three for the dead weight loss, the excess burden, and if we if we uh, calculate it relative to tax revenue R, we find it to be this expression one over two tau L over one minus tau L times the compensated labor supply is elasticity eta H W. Empirical values for this labor supply elasticity amount to approximately zero point three. 
so that we can compute the dead weight loss relative to the tax revenue uh, as a function of the labor income tax rate tell L. So for example, for a labor income tax rate of 10%, the dead weight loss is about 1.7% of tax revenue. And as you can see, this increases quadratically, non-linearly, with the tax rate. So for the United States, where you have uh, a tax wage on labor income of 40%, so this includes the federal income tax, social security contribution of both employees and employer, and a consumption tax, um, this number is computed by Prescott, um, you get a distortion of 10%, meaning that there's an excess burden of 10% of the revenues. In countries like Germany, where the tax switch amounts to 59%, well, this excess burden is about already about 22% of tax revenue. So if we consider the average wage earner in the United States, which according to the to the Tax Foundation US, which is a non-profit think tank in the US, amounted to uh, revenues of $17,600 in 2018, well then the excess burn, the money wasted because of this taxes, of the imposition of the taxes on labor income amounts to $1,760 for the average worker in the United States. In Germany, this amount is more than twice as high, similarly in Belgium, so consider yourself lucky if you live in the United States. So in this simple, in this partial equilibrium analysis, we have derived that in the United States, about $1,800 are the dead weight loss and excess burden for the average worker. We have analyzed it in partial equilibrium, so we did not consider general equilibrium effects. Uh, what are general equilibrium effects? Well, people get smaller net wages as a consequence, they consume less, demand falls, and as demand falls, firms reduce the labor demand. So this is a general equilibrium effect that we have not considered here in our analysis, but which we will look at in the subsequent analysis of, of the next video. And in the third and final video, we will look at the computation of this effect with the help of a computer language, either MATLAB or Gauss, as you prefer.